Hello guys, this is Richie back again. Just a quick update on my MT-10 and a walkthrough today. We're going to be replacing out our master cylinder with um, a R1 uh, type. So we're going to maintain our MT-10 lever. We're going to change this perch in here that pushes on the master cylinder with an R1 type and be a matter of undoing this little bolt here with the nut underneath it we're going to swap that out and we're going to fit up a brand new perch and then we're going to bleed the master to your existing lines to the um, MT-10 lines and then in part two of the video um, I'm going to try and compress um, the video as much as possible but also without um, sacrificing detail um, show you how to fit up a set of braided lines on this bike um, since um, since my last video um, I've had pretty overwhelming response to these mirrors uh, they are the gorgeous rhizoma type excellent uh, visibility and uh, I think it kind of frees up all of this area as well uh, as opposed to having a big mirror sitting up here that only, you only see the inside of your elbows um, keep an eye out for a video I've got happening at the minute. I've fitted up a Acropovic um, end can. It's the um, MT-10 one. It's looking a bit dirty at the minute. The sound with um, the link pipe and the Acro end can is uh, nothing short of awesome. In fact, um, in fact, the MT-10 under reasonably heavy acceleration sounds amazing with this exhaust um, combo on it. I do know there are other exhausts out there which I can't comment on. However, I know firsthand this sounds amazing. Um, so just a quick uh, shout out to my current um, subscribers. All of my old ones that have been with me from day dot when I first got my bike to when they had the when it had the when it had the damage on the rims to the comfort seat a review and a very warm welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, hang around. Um, I've got some more stuff coming up to do with my bike, um, namely airbox mods and um, stuff like that so whilst I was doing some research on the um, R1 a master cylinder upgrade I come across this company here uh, Stoltec Moto they're an American company who can supply your braided lines kit your they can supply um, the reservoir mounting kit and all this comes all in a kit along with the two bottles of fluid um, I've purchased and supplied my own R1 master cylinder this is that other lever perch I was referring to that's for an R1 um, and um, from what I could read Stoltec Moto do the only um, bolt-on style kit to take your brakes from standard um, factory config to almost as good as R1 standard of brakes that being the master cylinder the reservoir kit and then of course the rated lines I've just gone for the daggy black for a little bit of um, to make it look like it's a full factory but they do have a multitude of colours, um, benzo fitting colours, etc, etc. Um, so, without um, any more talking, well, let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first thing we want to do is you want to put some rags around, especially under this, under the master cylinder and on your paint. If the brake fluid 
gets on the paint. Panic, but don't panic because it does take a couple of hours for the brake fluid to eat through your paint. Having said that, you don't want to leave it laying on the paint for any longer than it needs to. So you want to clean it up ASAP. We're going to firstly remove this cover. It's just done with these two little screws here. And you have your brake fluid in there. Don't lose your screws. Just set the reservoir cap down somewhere. Preferably on your workbench or something like that. Then, with a form of vacuum pump, you want to capture all that old fluid. The more you can get out of it now, the cleaner the job will be in the long run. And there we have it. Old fluid. Okay, and now with that empty, you could probably go ahead and put the lid back on it because otherwise a dust and dirt's just going to get in there and you don't want that. So we're going to pop our lid back on, tighten our little screws down. Not too tight. That's plenty. Okay, next step is from the other side we want to remove that brake line but we want to make sure we put a rag underneath it because there may be a little bit of excess fluid that comes out from the line and that's fine uh, but we'll make sure that that rag is in place. Okay guys, now we're around the um, front end of the bike. You want to get a six mil Allen key and we want to remove this bolt, but not before we have a rag in place, just to catch any leftover brake fluid that may drip down onto your plastics and or onto your paint. So we just wanna put that into position Give it a little nip, it's loose. As you can see, a little bit of fluid's already come out. And we'll uh, get him out of there. Please be aware that because it is a banjo fitting, i.e. a fitting with a bolt that goes through it, it's gonna have a washers either side of the fitting. So, um, if you are, if you are replacing your hose kit at the same time, probably best to use, um, a brand new washers. However, as you can just see for the sake of this, it's got the bolt, it's got a hole in it, and then that passes through a washer. I'll see if I can get that other washer off without it falling on the ground. So there's a washer on there already. It's supposed to come off. It hasn't, uh, but you, you can see that the other one has. So it has to go like that. So it goes like that and then it screws into the fitting. So we're just gonna leave that like that for the time being, wipe our hands and 
let's work on getting this master cylinder off. Okay guys, with that brake line out of the way, we want to attack our um, the brake light switch now, which will bolt on to your R1 master cylinder, no problems. So we just want to remove this screw here. I'll see if I can show you the little silver screw here and that'll come down. We're just going to go ahead and unscrew him. <coughs> Try not to lose the screw if that's possible. There we go, that'll come down. And as you can see, that controls all your, all your brake lights, your cruise control, deactivation and so that's the beauty of using all factory Yamaha parts is that we um, get to utilize that factory switch and pretty much just keep it working with the um, with the uh, factory reliability okay with this master cylinder brake switch out of the way we can go and attack these two bolts here we want to uh, take a six a uh, five mil allen key i should say a five mil allen key and uh, just give it a little bit of curry there a little bit there i've already um broke the seal on these for the sake of the video take that off Please be aware, it does say up. It has to go back on that way if you are reusing the um, factory bar clamp. And uh, off we come. It is gonna drip a bit of fluid, just like this one has. So just tip it back like that and it won't tip, and it won't leak any fluid on you or onto your bike. Okay guys, you've got your MT master, MT10 master cylinder, I should say, off and on the bench. So really the change over to the R1 master is uh, reasonably straightforward. We want to remove, uh, you want to remove this screw here that holds your lever on, as you can see. And it's got a bolt, a 10 mil bolt, a 10 mil spanner bolt under here, your brake master switch for your brake lights, I should say, and your cruise control. The screw goes in here, and on that switch, it's got a little locating dowel, and it goes in this hole here. And if you look at the bottom of the R1 type, it's got the same. So this is our screw. That's our that's our um, locating dowel. Our lever is going to go in here, and then we'll use this bolt, or sorry, this nut, I should say, from there, and we'll whack him on there. So when you order the R1 Master, this is our part number. Put that on the screen there. That's the part number, and then you want to purchase this screw here. I will have the um, part number in the description just below in the uh, in the video description so we want to just unbolt this I've already loosened mine for the, just for the sake of the video to speed things up a bit and we'll take that off there now this screw will not come out because it's threaded into the master and it's designed like that, I assume, so that if you do lose the nut off it, even though it has got nylon at the top, worst case scenario, you're not going to squeeze for the brakes and the brake lever fall out in your hand. I assume that's why the manufacturer does it. Now, just a quick thing I did notice whilst I was pulling all this apart, 
The factory MT10 master cylinder is a 15 mil. The R1 type, I believe, is a 5 8 bore. Hence, you'll get a little bit better braking capacity and power because you can move more fluid, obviously. So we just want to remove that. That's our factory MT10 Master, as you see. We'll, we'll just put him over there, tip it up that way so any excess fluid won't run out of the hole. Then we want to go and pull off this perch, which we will do right now. So we'll get our Allen keys. I guess it's about a three mil. That was right. And uh, of course, these levers are from Pommy Land, so they are Imperial. 516 will have you on your way. A bit catchy handed today. Also locked in with a nylon lock nut. If you've got an R1 lever, you can just use an R1 lever. I want to maintain my MT10 style um, levers, hence I bought the new perch as per over here, and the little spring. So because it's spring loaded, I reckon as soon as we get this bolt out, it's all gonna fly in a hundred directions, so we'll just load it up a bit in our hand, get that bolt out of there, so we can have a better look. And as you can see, there's a spring in there, we'll just take that out of there, put our perch over here, and brand new nut bolt, and Brass bush, put our brass bush back in there, put that in there like that. We'll get our washer down in the guts. the job. Okay. So as you can see, we've still got, I can't go any further than that. Hmm. Wonder why that is. Okay guys, so we've worked through a little problem. Um, because the perch has, runs a different profile, I can only get one, two, and three lever positions. So um, that's a small price to pay to have MT10 on your lever to match your other side. So we'll go and um, fit the lever to the master. So as I said before, when you order your master cylinder. You want to order the master cylinder, which is this part number here, and you order one, and you want to order this. It goes through the master, through your lever. Now, one thing to notice when you are putting this together, you want to put a little dab of grease on this, as well as on the ball inside there, the tip of my finger, the little brass knuckle so that when they are moving together they don't 
it'll slow down any um, premature wear. So I will now go and do that. You're not going to need a lot of grease, just the normal bearing grease. That's even what I've got on the screwdriver is probably way too much for what we want. But just a dab on there, like that. Set that down without getting it all over your lever. Um, just a little dab in there and that should be suffice. Now, you want to put it like that. Sit the arm of your master cylinder up against the piston first. Give it a little squeeze in, line them up, drive your screw in. And drive that in. Beautiful. That should lock out like it has. We want to then go take our original MT10 bolt Oop. without dropping it as I have uh, drop the lock nut on there I'm using a 10mm spanner now just give it a, a little nip that's plenty now we're ready to whack your R1 Master back on the bike. Okay guys, at this point, you should be ready to fit your um, uh, fully prepared R1 Master cylinder back up to your MT10 handlebars. So we wanna take the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. So you wanna take your lever hold it in the approximate position just you should have a, the old outline of the old bar or like of the old master cylinder still on the bar as this is you see it's slightly darkened take your clamp space pay special attention to the up on the clamp put it into the position now take your 5mm allen key, drive them screws so it's nipped, just don't put any tension on it yet, you will need to adjust it to your riding angle, you just want it tight enough so you can still move it around a bit but not too loose, so I'd, like that is perfectly fine. Now when working um, on the brakes we'll uh, come around this side so you can see what we're doing here with the um, fluid fitting see if we've got that on our camera yes we do as you can okay, guys we're up to the part where we're going to connect up our brake line I've just um, connected up the uh, rake switch so again one washer either side of the line fitting and you want to put that on there like that get him into position you will gonna you're gonna have to just jiggle the line a bit because these fittings are very particular don't try and put a ratchet on it you will just cross thread it if you can't tighten it with your hand then there's something wrong so you, you should be able to get it started at least till you find a little sweet spot as I just have and then just send it home to sit and then we want to put our fuel line up uh, fuel line our brake line I should say fuel line uh, back in don't let it a rub up against your handlebar, hold it out there as such, torque it up, and then we're right to 
mount our our other bracketry for our for our reservoir and then we'll go through the bleeding process okay guys so in the break I have fitted the hose to the master cylinder our Bembro um, master um, cylinder reservoir kit I've assembled this as per the instructions that come with it pretty straightforward we now want to put the bolt supplied in the kit and the little washer here together I remove one clamp bolt drop that in there like that and just um, run that up so it takes up looks like it's an 8 mil have been wrong probably wrong again but as you can see it everything lines up so it gives you a close to um, a factory fit uh, the kit comes with two types of clamps one is a little one like this two types of clips uh, your Brembro style which fit on the um, reservoir end and the kit will come with a factory Yamaha um, genuine part so that is the one you want to use on the master cylinder end and the smaller one will fit on the um, on the um, reservoir end Now, I will warn you, these are a pain in the you-know-what to fit. But with a bit of perseverance and a little bit of swearing, especially on for the master cylinder end, anything is achievable. So we'll just fit that up like that. Come underneath him with our pliers. And fit him up over the fitting here just like that okay we just want to go and tighten that up so it sits up at a nice angle nice and flat and even take our eight mil spanner and we just want to nip him up so it sit it as flat as possible you got to give it a little bit of love and a bit of uh, encouragement to go where you want it to go to do so not too tight just firm nice and firm there we go splendid now the next part is the fun of bleeding the master cylinder okay at the top of the reservoir, there'll be two screws. Take them out, pop your cap off. Leave it somewhere handy. Don't be scared to use a, a couple of rags to completely cover the area. And take your brake master, uh, sorry, take your brake fluid. Uh, this is the Motul stuff that is supplied with the kit. And uh, go and give that lid a crack. It should be fully sealed as per the lid, which is a great sign. And we just want to pour a bit in the reservoir up to the max line, pop our lid back on. Okay, now, this here is our little bleeder, so we want to pop him off, like that. Okay guys, this is the part where I do give, I have to give a disclaimer, if you don't know what you're doing with the brake bleeding, 
um, either um, stop right now and Google how to do it, look on YouTube how to do it, don't wait um, until you're hurtling down the road at 100 um, kilometers an hour to realize your brakes aren't bled properly. The, the art of bleeding is to get rid of the air in the system, so you've only got fluid in the system so how we do that is there are numerous ways to do it actually but um, I've purchased a cheap air pump from eBay put your end of the hose on the fitting and you put your fluid in here make sure it's full up to the max line and then you give this a pump you build up your pressure in your little pump here with your hand like that and that draws um, air it'll suck the fluid just open your bleeder and just um, cycle your brake lever it'll draw the fluid through the master cylinder and then eventually you'll end up with fluid inside the master cylinder is it can be a, a bit of a long process um, and so what you want to do is you want to pump up your your master cylinder hold it undo your bleeder it'll go all the way up to up to the grip don't release the lever just yet you want to close that off any air bubbles will come out and you want to keep doing that same process until there is no air bubbles in the master cylinder at all and then just keep doing that until you've got no more air bubbles the beauty of using the hose on it is that you can is that you can monitor what's coming out of there so as as long as it's solid fluid do it one more time two more times to be safe then you're happy to close that off tighten it up don't swing on it because you will break it and um, give it a good wipe down and uh, put the bleeding cap on it and then move on to each caliper Obviously, the MT-10 has two calipers on the front. So you want to start on the lower, on the front caliper at the left side of the bike. Crack that open, get a handy assistant, girlfriend, partner, significant other, grandmother, whoever, to build up your um to squeeze your lever squeeze it up then open for the bleeder bleed any air out of the system when the lever reaches the grip same process as bleeding the master hold it release the bleeder you'll see the air come out keep doing that Oh, sorry, and then you close the bleeder when the lever reaches the grip. Then keep bleeding it, keep bleeding it until um, all the um, air is out of the line. Close it off until it's only solid fluid coming out. And then move around to the right side of the bike. Do that caliper there. And then go and have a feel of your lever. I've bled mine. As I said, it is a quite a tedious process. Um, I believe I can get mine a little bit better than I have it, but um, instant, um, instant, uh, pretty good feel on that lever. Like that is a full lever right there. From there, like I could adjust that up even more, um, which is pretty good. I'm going to give it another going over because I'm still convinced there's a little bit more air in there. Maybe it's just being um, uh, a bit stubborn. 
or maybe I should use the um, speed leaders that came in my kit. They may make the process a bit easier. Other than that, guys, um, thanks for watching. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Showing you part two where I fit the braided lines over and out.